Oh, I'm sorry. I was just looking at the ARRL antenna book. I have a lot of antenna books around here. Some of them are written more scientifically, and some of them are aimed towards ham radio projects. But uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about loops and loop antennas. And, uh, you know, uh, loop antennas really have two primary functions in ham radio. One of them is radio direction finding, which is probably uh, most done at high frequencies, but you can also do it at low frequencies, like 80 meters and so on. Uh, and the other is to reduce electrostatic pickup or to reduce noise, like in your neighborhood, if you've got some offending uh, noise source that you'd like to cancel out. So the loop antenna, I suppose there's a third mode too, and that is of just a very compact antenna. Uh, where you uh, you want to cover a wide band of frequencies, but you don't have a lot of area. So the loop antenna makes sense there, too. So if you've been following the channel, you know that uh, we have worked on a loop antenna before, specifically uh, the ferrite rod antenna, which is a form of loop antenna, uh, broadside to the signal, and... Uh, picks up uh, stations and uh, gives you some noise reduction with the nulls that you uh, produce with the ferrite rod antenna. Now I want to get into uh, a simple frame antenna or a larger loop antenna that can be used for reception. Uh, loop antennas basically have two or three functions. Normally people think of them as a low noise or a noise canceling kind of antenna where you can null out no electrostatic noise like from motors and local QR Nancy, QRN. Um, radio direction finding of course loop antennas are, are useful for finding a bearing or an angle of arrival of a signal. And uh, as a general reception antenna in a small space, loop antennas have their place in uh, a small yard or in a compact area or in an apartment perhaps uh, taking the place of a much longer wire antenna. So there's many different things you can do with loop antennas. But I kind of want to focus on uh, the basics of a full-size frame antenna that you might use in the HF world maybe even the, the low frequency world up through maybe 20 or 30 megahertz. So let's call it a shortwave loop antenna. So uh, I've got a, a few books on antennas. Uh, I, I mean you can go to the to the origin of antenna books, uh, Krauss's uh, seminal work on antennas, uh, all the way uh, to uh, lots of hobby magazine articles on loop antennas and of course the ARRL uh, handbook and the antenna book are full of uh, loop antenna ideas. Um, if you are going for radio direction finding and you're going for just the uh, ultimate in accuracy, you want to keep the loop small in relation to the wavelength that you're trying to receive. Perhaps 0.1 wavelength at the highest frequency that you're interested in. So that means a loop is going to be pretty small if you want to cover the whole shortwave band. Perhaps 20 inch loop might be as big as you want to go if you're going for accuracy. However, if you're going for signal pickup and you still want to have most of the attributes of a good loop antenna, then you can perhaps go to a larger frame style antenna that might be 20 or 30 feet in diameter, believe it or not. So that's kind of what I'm going to concentrate on in this video, is a little more efficient loop antenna for the shortwave bands, a full-size loop that you might be able to rotate outdoors or put on top of your garage. So When we're talking about small shielded magnetic loops, here are the four basic styles with the basic feed structures. What happens when you do not properly feed your loop antenna? In other words, 
if the loop antenna is not fed in a balanced manner, um, you can end up with some interesting effects where you have both the uh, pickup of the loop itself in its electromagnetic mode, and you also have a vertical antenna effect where you're picking up an unbalanced signal, much like a whip or a monopole antenna. And these two tend to add together at different frequencies, and you can end up with uh, some patterns emerging, uh, some self-made uh, patterns at different frequencies. Will the antenna still be useful for reception? It might be, and I think that's where I want to start. Let's break all of the rules and build an unshielded, I'm sorry, and build an unbalanced loop. We're going to break every rule you know about loop antennas on our first try. And we're going to build an unbalanced loop antenna. It, it, it's a deliberate attempt to build a poorly functioning loop. And that's where we're going to start, and we will build from there. Okay, I'm now laying out a loop antenna that would be effective from the VLF frequencies up through the point where the loop begins to become resonant. And uh, all loop antennas that are smaller than their resonant frequency or a, a full wavelength of, of wire around the circumference are known as small loop antennas. They are electrically small and the radiation will be in a figure eight pattern not broadside as with a quad antenna, but off the ends in a donut shape. Now these loop antennas, of course, have an aperture or a effective pickup area, turning the electromagnetic waves into voltages that we can pick up and send to our receiver. So the larger the loop, the more pickup, the larger the aperture, it is said, of the antenna. Now, uh, this loop antenna, will it have as much gain as a dipole? Well, probably not. Uh, by definition, a dipole is a resonant antenna unless it's a shortened or short dipole. So a full-size dipole will generally have more gain than any loop antenna that's considered below a resonant frequency. Now, of course, if we add elements, then we get directivity and we can get gain. And now you can start to beat the gain of the dipole. But we're just talking about a simple loop antenna here. Uh, antennas are very uh, uh, <laughs> emotional and they're very controversial with, uh, with people. So I have to tread lightly when I'm talking about antennas. Now, there are many different styles of loop antennas, shielded unshielded, uh, loop antennas that have single turn, multiple turns, resonant loop antennas, non-resonant loop antennas, and all of these are uh, quite effective. They all have their place and they all produce uh, good results compared to many of the wire type antennas that you're used to. All will give a reduction in atmospheric noise and close by uh, QR Nancy, QRN, or uh, man-made noise. So uh, they can be used to null out or shield out um, noises from point sources in your neighborhood. So people like to use loop antennas like this for reception. So we're not talking about transmitting loops where we're trying to get maximum efficiency, we're talking about a receiving loop where we're trying to get a reduction in noise but still be able to pick up the signal. So this is a very simple design. I'm just using some eight-foot pieces of wood and a central mast with some U-bolts and uh, this will be uh, hit with some polyurethane to make it weatherproof and we're going to try some different elements. First, we'll try an untuned coaxial loop, and later on, we will use a resonant coaxial loop. And finally, we will do a resonant wire loop. So these are some different styles of loop antennas that we're going to put on this frame 
and uh, take a look at some of the results. Okay, next got. I'm measuring around the outside of the loop to see how long the conductor or the coax or whatever we're using for the loop has to be and uh, just using a long tape measure for that. Okay we've got 27 feet. 27 feet is a circumference of this loop. So a 27 foot loop is going to have a natural resonant frequency or a full wave frequency around 35 megahertz. So that should be okay for the HF band. I've got a nice roll of RG6 TV line. This is really nice uh, cable TV line and that's what I'm going to use for the coaxial loop which will be the first type. Okay so we have draped 27 feet of coax around the outside of the loop and we brought the tag end back to the middle where it meets the original roll. For this first antenna we are simply going to strip the end and attach the center conductor. We're going to attach the center conductor to the shield of the coax right where they meet. Done. There will be no capacitor. There will be no ballon. This is a pure coaxial loop. Okay, as you can see, I've prepared the end of the coax. So I've got the center conductor sticking out far enough that I can solder it to the braid that I prepared on the opposite side of the, uh, the loop. So that's the junction. The braid on this side is going to be left open. So this is the break in the braid that allows us to have uh, pickup but provides an electromagnetic shield and should reduce the noise. Okay, it's not exactly the prettiest setup in the world, but I've got it up probably at the 12 foot level on the bottom. It's just above the uh, the shed uh, side roof. You know, the shed uh, has a little lean-to on the side where I keep my kayaks. So this thing is right at the, uh, the edge of the woods. Probably about a hundred feet of coax going back to the shack. And again, this is the bare loop. No amplifier, no ballon, no coupling loop. It's just a simple coaxial loop antenna. So, of course, you've got to uh, terminate the end of the coax with uh, some type of connector. Uh, BNC, specially made for RG6, would be ideal. Or uh, you can get PL259 adapters that will fit the cable. Yeah, right. They almost always have to be drilled out some way or another to get them to actually fit on the cable. Because the cable uh, insulator thickness varies so wildly uh, throughout the industry, It'd be a rare occurrence if you actually found an adapter that goes into the PL259 that works with the cable. So let's look at the AB comparison at the switch. First of all, we have a high dipole at about 75 feet. It's a 80, 40 meter trap dipole back in the woods. And the feed line is fairly low loss coax, 150 feet against the loop which is fed with low loss RG6 a very high grade double shielded cable TV coax 75 ohms and we have the loop antenna which is approximately 27 feet of wire in a loop and as you could see the bottom of it as it's around 15 feet off the ground So the loop has a lot of disadvantages. It's got no amplifier, no ballon, uh, the feed is at the bottom, uh, the split is at the bottom, and uh, there's no resonant. It's an untuned loop antenna. 
So let's go back to the receiver. So here is our little setup. I want to be able to compare a regular trap dipole for 80 and 40 meters. That's up uh, probably about 75 feet at the apex with our little loop antenna, which is uh, about 27 feet in circumference. We've done the, the simple attachment to the shield from the hot of the uh, coax, so we have a split right at the feed. And uh, it's good to, uh, to take a peek uh, at around uh, lunchtime. And uh, there are some signals coming in. There are some signals coming in this time of day by Skywave. So let's first take a listen. This is the dipole. And this is the loop antenna. Now the loop antenna has significant pickup. Back to the dipole. And the loop. Dipole. And the loop. So depending on how the fades go, you can see that the dipole has more gain than the loop at this frequency. So this is a typical AM station, 1.2 megahertz on the dipole and on the loop. So the broadband loop is picking up in the broadcast band. So we truly have developed a wideband loop with just a piece of coax. This is 17 meters. This is the dipole. And now on the loop. Dipole. And the loop. So they're about on par on the 17 meter band. Again, this is a broadband untuned piece of coax. Okay, let's go to our friend CHU Canada at 3.33 megahertz. This is on the dipole. It's the middle of the day. Generally, this is not a super strong signal. As you can hear, there's some storms coming. Now let's go to the loop. Now it is picking up CHU. The antenna has an effective aperture at this frequency. Okay, so it is capable of picking up signals at this frequency. However, we're noticing a lot of noise, a lot of QRN, static, it's picking up more than a loop antenna should. So right out of the box, our simple hookup is showing a lot of vertical polarization and susceptibility to noise. The loop is definitely not showing one of its strong points, and that is rejection of local man-made noise. Now, of course, the dipole has more signal, so it tends to hide any noise that might be in the background. But I first wanted to show that our compromised loop is picking up a lot of local noise. So I think we're going to have to discard our initial hookup, which is the simple connection of the center conductor to the coax shield out of hand because it should not be picking up this noise. Here at 7 megahertz, the bottom of 40 meters in the AM mode, the loop antenna is picking up a tremendous amount of man-made noise. The dipole is also picking up some noise, but it is lower. So again, the, uh, the loop is not doing its job. Okay, let's try a low frequency. This is a nearby non-directional beacon. It's probably less than 15 miles away. This is on the dipole. Let's 
switching to the loop now I did note that the loop is oriented north-south and the station is due north so we do have the advantage that the loops uh, strong broad, uh, broad beam is on this beacon just by luck so this really shows how the, the loop is uh, going to be very effective at low frequencies. This is where it really looks like a loop antenna at these low frequencies where it's only a fraction of a wavelength long. Okay, we're now on 20 meters, listening to a CW signal at 3 kilohertz upper sideband. On the dipole, I'm going to switch to the loop. You can see the loop is showing its greatness as far as signal pickup, but we need to feed it a little bit better. Get that noise situation straightened out. Okay, here we are in 10 meters. Here's the dipole and the loop. I've done nothing to optimize the signal with the loop. I haven't rotated it. But I think we've proven that the loop is picking up signals pretty much from the bottom of the band all the way to the top of the band. And that's really all we wanted to show with the loop. In the next video, we're going to fix that feed and make it a proper balanced feed and see if we can't knock down that noise. However, we are showing that a single turn coaxial loop, especially one of this size, has a great amount of efficiency and it even though it's not comparable to a dipole antenna it's picking up enough signal that it's showing that it's going to be a very good antenna all the way from some fairly low frequencies to some fairly high frequencies and again this is an untuned loop this is a broadband loop that should provide good performance across the entire band. So in this first video I think we've shown that the simple untuned coaxial loop antenna especially when done in a large format like uh, our 27 foot uh, circumference uh, loop is capable of good pickup of signals all the way from the broadcast band up through 10 meters. Also we've shown that if not properly fed the loop antenna will exhibit vertical antenna like noise pickup which is not what we want. We want to be able to suppress local static pickup and this antenna is not accomplishing that. So in the next video we try a proper balanced feed with the single turn untuned coaxial loop.